guys and welcome back to my channel. This is Erica with Confessions of a Homeschooler and today I'm going to show you how to make this really fun project. This is just a drawstring squishy bag. I already have a tutorial on the basic squishy bag but today we're going to add a front pocket and I usually use these bags for my knitting and whatnot. As a matter of fact I already have a knitting project in here as we speak um, but I don't like to shove my patterns in with all of my yarn and so I thought it would be fun to have a front pocket on this so that I could put my patterns in there. This project is super easy. It takes um, probably under an hour to put together. Definitely great for a beginner sewer. So if you want to see how to make this, let's get started. Okay, so the supplies for this project are really simple. You're just going to need some fun fabric. I am using Riley Blake Bake Sale 2 by Lori Holt. You'll also need a rotary cutter. I like the Ulfa 45 millimeter splash. I will link all of these products below for you. You may need some pins or some of these fun wonder clips, whichever you prefer. You'll also need some cotton batting. These are just leftover scraps that I have from quilts that I have made. Um, and so it's just plain 100% cotton batting. If you don't want to quilt this bag, you may also use fusible fleece in place of this. I will link both below. You'll also need some 505 basting spray, or you can also pin baste, or if you're using the fusible fleece, you won't really need this. Um, I'm not going to be using it, so that's why I have that. You'll need some a clear acrylic ruler so that you can cut your fabric and everything to size. And then you'll need a um, self-healing mat to cut on. This one is the Ulfa Deluxe Cutting Mat. I will link everything that I can for you below. I'm loving this Ulfa mat. Um, it's super smooth and I actually cut all of my batting on it for this project and I didn't have any problems. The blade ran over it like butter and I didn't get any of those marks where the batting kind of infuses itself into your cutting mat from the um, where the blade goes through. So. Anyways, if you are looking for something to cut batting on and you cut a lot of it, this mat is spectacular. You'll also need some of this cording, rope cording, and this is just cotton cording and I got it from our local craft store. Okay, so I have all of my fabric cut and I've set everything aside except for the two pieces for our drawstring casing and then this is our small handle. And I just like to prepare the smaller um, little pieces first, that way when I get to them I can just add them in quickly. So for the casings, these are super simple to repair. All we're going to do is flip them right side down and then we're going to turn in the edge by a quarter of an inch and then fold it one more time and all that's going to do is give us a finished edge here. Okay, so here's that side and then we're just going to pull it over here and do the exact same thing to the other side and honestly I'm just kind of eyeballing this about a quarter of an inch in and then fold it one more time and then we're just going to take it to the sewing machine and just run a straight stitch down the edge. We're going to do that on both of these casings and really all that's going to do is just give us a finished edge here so that we don't have this fabric fraying when we're opening and closing our bag. Okay, that's pretty much done. The next thing we have to do to finish preparing these and then we will literally be done with this these guys is just take them over the ironing board and just press them in half this way and then we can set them aside. Okay, here we are. So I just pressed them in half. We're going to set these aside because for right now they're done and we'll grab them later when we need them. The next thing we're going to prepare is our little handle here and I just flip it right side down and I'm just going to press these edges in by a quarter of an inch. I'm just kind of doing this with my fingernail here you guys seam roller we can use or you can iron it whatever works okay so we're just going to press in each edge by a quarter of an inch and then we're going to fold it in half so that those line up and press it one more time then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and just run a stitch about an eighth of an inch away from this edge making sure that we're closing up that opening and then another eighth of an inch from this edge just to give it a finished look Okay, so here are our two casings and here is our strap all done. We can leave this edge raw because it's gonna get caught up when we put it onto our bag, so no worries there. We're gonna set all of this aside and move on to the front pocket. Okay, so here are my fabric for the front pocket. This is gonna be the front and this is gonna be the lining. And you can, of course, make them the same if you want. I just chose to make them different, so totally up to you. Either way, we're going to place the fabric that we've chosen right sides together like this 
and we're just going to run a stitch about a quarter of an inch all the way down this edge and then we're going to press that seam open and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, you should have something that now looks like this and I've just pressed the seam open and I actually for, didn't mention this in my supplies that this is just a little seam roller and it's super cute and honestly this is great for younger sewers because um, they don't have to use hot irons and whatnot and it actually works pretty well and you just roll it along the seam to press your seam. So that's all that is and I just thought I'd mention it really quick because yeah this is great my daughters use this instead of the iron. Okay, so now that we have our two pieces for our front pocket sewn together, we are going to take our lining piece next and we're just going to lay it on here like so. And this should fit kind of snugly. If it's a little bit too large, you can trim it down a little bit if you need to, but you should have about a quarter of an inch or so. So here's a closer view, but you should basically have about a quarter of an inch or so around the outside of your batting from your pocket. And then you're just going to take the other piece and just fold it over and just line up those edges. And you can either pin this, you can spray baste it, totally up to you. You just want to secure that batting in there just a little bit, just enough to do some fun um, quilting on this. You can also use fusible fleece and skip the quilting altogether. I'm actually going to quilt it because that part's fun. I'm just using my 505 basting spray here and just giving it a little bit, not much, just enough to kind of hold it in place. And then I'm going to flip it over and do it on the other side as well. Okay. So now I'm going to take this over to my machine and do some fun quilting on it. Because we're going to quilt this and I'm also going to quilt my bag, I'm actually going to take this basted piece and just set it aside over by my machine. I'm also going to do the same kind of prep work for the outsides of my bag. So here's one of the sides and here's another. You can of course make them the same, I just thought it would be fun to do something different. I'm going to take one of my pieces of batting and I like to line up the fabric first just because this stuff is tacky um, and then it just makes it a little bit easier. And just pull the fabric down then, give it a little fray, press it back up. Again, if you're using fusible fleece, you can skip this step and you can quilt it or not, totally up to you. So there's one of my sides, I'm gonna set that over by my sewing machine and then I'm gonna repeat the same process with the back of my bag. Um, and there is only a half an inch difference on this, so, uh, you know, length and height, so just make sure you have your fabric going the right direction. And I'm not putting on too much, as you can see, just enough to hold it in place so I can quilt it. Okay, now I'm going to take both of my outside pieces with their batting and my front pocket with its lining and batting over to my sewing machine and we're gonna do some fun quilting. If you need help quilting or you've not quilted before, I will put links below. I have a straight line quilting tutorial and a free motion quilting tutorial. Super easy, super fun, and small projects like this are great to experiment on. I've decided to do some free motion quilting, so that means I just need to take off my regular presser foot here and put on my free motion foot. Super easy on my Juki. Okay, I'm going to turn my stitch length to zero, lower my feet dogs, and raise up my presser foot pressure. So I'm just gonna start in a corner up here. Probably just do a meandering pattern, nothing fancy. I took a quick break to grab my machine gears. These definitely help when quilting and I just forgot while I was filming, but should be a lot easier now. Yeah. 
Okay, so here we go. We are all done quilting all of our pieces here. These are both the outside pieces and our front pocket. Now you just need to decide which piece you want to be outside if you've, or the front if you've used two different ones. So I could either put the pocket on here, but that's pretty busy. I think I would probably rather put my pocket on the gingham. So next thing I need to do is just line that up like that. Just making sure that the raw edges are lined up down here. Um, like I mentioned, this pattern is 12 and a half by 13, so as you can see, there's just, so just make sure that you have everything going the right direction. So we're gonna lay that down like that. So we've got the front, the pocket, and then the next thing that we're gonna do is grab our strap here, and we're just going to fold the strap in half like that so the raw edges are together. And then just about an inch above your pocket, you'll want to place your handle. And I'm just gonna use a wonder clip just to kind of place it, keep it in place. The next thing that we're going to do is grab the other outside layer and we're going to put that right side down on top of the other portion. And again, you just want to make sure you've got it going the right direction. So again, that's the front of the bag, the front pocket and the back of the bag and the handle. So we are just going to take some of these wonder clips now and just kind of clip everything together so that it doesn't move around when we take it over to our sewing machine. And we are going to sew about a half an inch all the way down this side, all the way across the bottom, and all the way back up the top. Make sure that you're getting all of your layers in your seam, including your handle. And when we get to our handle, we're going to, I like to go back and forth over it just a couple times just because that handle gets a lot of use. Okay, so let's take this over to the machine again. So a half an inch seam all the way around these three sides, leave the top open. So when you get to the end down here, just leave your needle in the down position, raise up your presser foot, pivot your work, and keep on going. And we're just coming to our handle here. So I'm just gonna go back and forth over that just a couple times just to secure it. Okay, so here it is. Should be looking something like this. And then when you open it up, you'll see your handle sticking out right there and your front pocket right here. We're actually going to leave this like this and just set it aside for a second along with our casings. We're going to work on our lining next. So the next thing you wanna do is take both of your lining pieces, put them right sides together. And then this is the part you just want to be careful with. This bag is 13 inches wide, 12 and a half high. So you just want to make sure that you are sewing around the correct three sides. So I like to just grab my bag here and make sure that I've got it going the right direction and it's not too tall. Okay, so once we're sure we're going the right direction here, I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine and you're going to sew down one side and then about to here, leave a space here and then pick back up here and sew all the way around. And I like to just leave myself some little stop and start markers just so that I know that I need to leave a hole. This is what we're going to be using to turn our bag right side out. So you want to make sure that you have about a three or four inch gap right there. And then I'll probably just throw a couple of pins in here. Also the pins help me when I get to my machine know which side I should be sewing so that I don't accidentally sew up my opening. So we're gonna leave the top of the bag open. Sew down one side, across, stop, pick back up here, sew across and back up. And I usually backstitch at these junctures just so that when I'm flipping my bag inside out, I don't tear that seam. Um, and again, I think I forgot to mention this, but we are sewing at about a half of an inch or so seam. Whatever you did on your outside of your bag is what you'll do on your lining.
Okay, here we go. Here is our lining. Here is the outside of our bag. And then the next thing that we are going to do is grab our friction erasable pen. Really, you can use any pen because you won't see this. And we're going to box our corners. So we're going to do the same thing to both the lining and the outer portion of the bag. So I like to just stick both my hands in the corners here and then fold them together like, remember those things when you were a little kid where you, what were those called? Oh, they're made out of paper and it was like, well, open, open, open. Oh, anyway, like those. So stick my hands into the corners here and then bring them together so that we've got this kind of pointy edge. Let me get this one out of the way so you can see a little bit better. So it kind of looks like this and I will usually open it up and just sort of flatten it. Really what you want to make sure is that this, this seam and this seam are basically lining up with each other. So I'm going to take my ruler and here's my one and a half inch point. I'm going to line the diagonal on my ruler up with one of these edges. It doesn't really matter which one. And I usually put then the one and a half line on my seam right here. And you're just going to mark a line going across. Okay. And I will usually take a pin as well and just kind of pin these just so that it doesn't move on my way to the sewing machine. Then I'm just going to fold that one out of the way and do the same thing. Okay, here we go. For the second one, I want to do a little closer so you can see better. Line up this diagonal on your ruler with the diagonal on the fabric and then line up the one and a half inch point with the point of your fabric as well and just make a mark. We're going to do the same exact thing to the outside of the bag as well. Okay, so those are ready to go. We're going to move this one out of the way over by the sewing machine. Okay, here's the outside of our bag. We're going to do the exact same thing. The only thing to make sure of when you're doing this is to make sure that this pocket is against the front of the bag when you put your hands in here. So I'm going to put my hand in on top of the pocket, if that makes sense. If I were to put it underneath the pocket, I would be um, basically switching what side my pocket went on. It would still work out. It wouldn't be the end of the world, but I don't want to do that. So put your hands on top of your pocket up into your corners here. Fold your hands together like one of those, like a fortune cookie. <laughs> Turn it to the side. Sorry. <sighs> okay. Turn it to the side here. Just make sure everything's nice and flat for both. Again, you kind of want to just make sure that these seams are sort of lined up with each other. And we're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to fold this one out of the way. So we're just repeating this process, lining up my diagonal with the diagonal of my fabric and my one and a half inch point. And this is bulky, but the point is somewhere right there. So just get it basically in the right spot. This is a pretty forgiving project. Okay. And then I'm going to actually wonder clip on the sides because this is so bulky. It's just easier. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. So next we're going to take our lining and our outside of our bag and we're going to sew directly on this line and then we'll cut it off at about a half an inch or so from the seam line and then when we turn it right side out it'll have a nice boxy corner. And I do like backstitch a little bit on this just to kind of secure it a little bit better. Okay, so here's our lining, here's the outside of our bag, and it's time to just clip off these little pieces. If you'd like, you might want to uh, check, flip your outside of your bag right side out and just check and make sure you have your pocket on the right side and all of that. I'm gonna go ahead and just throw caution to the wind here and go for it. Just eyeballing about a half an inch or so. And now we are ready to assemble our bag. Take your bag out, outside of your bag and flip it right side out. Just press out those corners. 
There we go. So here's our cute little pocket. Here's the back side. And then we've got our handle right here. So make sure all of this is kind of looking similar to my bag. Then you're gonna take your lining and leave it inside out, okay? So we're going to basically put the bag inside the lining. So the lining is inside out, the bag is right side out. But before we do that, we are going to add our casings for our drawstring. And all you want to do is line up the raw edges of your casings with the raw edge of your bag and just line those up. And I like to stick a pin here. You can also use a wonder clip, it doesn't really matter. Just to keep this in place. And I just center it in. So it looks like mine's about an inch from each side. And I'm just gonna pin that in place. Put another one over here, okay? I'm going to flip it over and do the exact same thing with the other one. So again, take the raw edge of your casing, line it about an inch from each edge, and I can actually see my other one, so I'm kind of lining them up so they're about the same. Okay, so now that's ready to go. So now we're gonna take this whole thing our bag outside, right side out, with the two casings, and we're gonna place it inside our lining. So our lining is inside out still. Here's the pretty side, here's the wrong side. We're just going to slide it in there like a pantyhose. Do you guys know what pantyhose are? Okay. Worst invention ever made, okay. All right, next thing that we're gonna do is take the seam side of your lining and your bag and I like to just line that up and grab some wonder clips here and just start lining this whole thing up so I do the sides first so there's one side here is the other side and then we can start putting on clips all the way around just to hold it in place I'm actually going to use my pin for that one. Again, make sure all our edges are lined up. Okay. All right, so it should be looking something like this. You've got the lining of your bag. If you open it up, you should be seeing batting. If you are seeing something pretty, you did it backward. Okay, we're going to take this over to the sewing machine now. We are going to sew about a quarter of an inch um, to a half an inch all the way around the outside of this bag and then we are almost done. And I like to start on one of the side seams, I don't know why, no reason, doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna do a quarter of an inch to a half inch somewhere in there, I don't really measure um, a whole lot but just make sure that you get all of your layers in and you'll be good to go. And here we are at our first casing strap. Just make sure that you get it all in there. You don't want to go too wide on this though or you won't be able to get your rope through. Okay you guys, we've sewn all the way around the edge there. Make sure we get everything in the seam and now comes the fun part. So just gently pull your bag. Okay, and you should have something that looks like this outside of the bag, lining in the bag. We still have this hole to deal with. So I just finger press in these edges. It will kind of naturally go that way as well just because you've kind of sewn it. You can also grab your little seam roller here. And then you just wanna take that over to your sewing machine and just stitch right along that edge to close up that hole. So I have sewn our little opening closed here. And the next thing to do is to just push the lining inside of your bag. Should be looking like this. And then I just kind of uh, roll it down in there and kind of press that just so that it's flat. I'm gonna take this back over to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna run a stitch all along this edge. It helps keep the lining inside the bag and everything just laying nicely. Otherwise, as you can see, the lining can kind of come out of the bag a little bit. So I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna be almost done with this project. Okay. 
Okay guys, I forgot to mention you need a safety pin of sorts to do this part. All I did was fold my cording in half and then I'm just going to snip it right there. So I'm just running my paper clip or my safety pin through the edges of the cording and I'm going to bring both through this first one. And this part's just a little bit finicky, so just take your time. Okay, so there's that. And you're going to pull it through, and then we're going to take off one of them and just set it aside. I'm going to take the other one and continue on through my second casing. Okay, now the one that we left behind, I'm going to just pull on it so I can figure out which one it is. And it's this one. And that one, I'm actually going to pull to the left. And we are going to run that one back through the bottom. So essentially what's happening here, as you can see, this one is a whole string. So you've got one that wraps this way and is open on this side. We're gonna have another one that's open on this side and closed on the left side, like this. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's do that. All right, guys, we're basically done with our bag here. Okay, so as you can see here, Hopefully, you've got two loops, one on the right side, one on the left side, and then two of the loose ends. And if you pull on them and you've done it properly, voila, drawstring. Okay, so the only other thing left to do, and I usually pull mine all the way wide open, and then you're just gonna take your two loose ends and just tie a knot like so. If you'd like, you can Trim off these ends, and then you're going to do the same thing to the other side. Trim off your ends, and there you got it. There it is. Woohoo! Drawstring bag with a fun pocket in the front. And the reason I wanted to do this pocket in the front is because um, I tend to use these bags for knitting and my uh, patterns really, I would like to just be able to slide in here uh, just so that they don't get um, torn and wrinkled and crushed in the bottom of my bag. All right guys, so that is our drawstring squishy bag. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's super fun and easy. I think this bag takes less than an hour to put together and you can really kind of customize it. If you're curious, the fabric that I used for my bag is from the Lori Holt Bake Sale 2 line and it's got this really cute low volume print on the inside. It has little cake stands on it. And then I did the gingham for the front of the bag, this cute, kind of cherry print for the back. There's a recipe print for the handle and then the pink bake sale print for the front of the bag and then I just did the same lining for the pocket. Anyways, that is how to make this bag. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you like videos like this, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see more. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time front pocket on it. I usually he's keeping the birds quiet. <laughs> you know it's recording, right? Nope. So no, they're different colors, aren't they? Darn it. I thought I had one baby with the same eyes. Nope. <laughs>